metallic, metallic bonds. Their properties, which you should know from like junior high or something. Their properties are they, and you've already told me, they are malleable. Well, let's start with the, well, that's not. Um, I never remember how to spell malleable. M A L. Double L? -A -L. Mal U A B L E? I don't think so. No, it's got me in it? It's M A L L E A B L E. Yeah. M A L L E. Just an E instead of the E. A B L E. E A L B L E. Okay. Malleable, which means you can, it maintains its shape when hit like a coin maintains a, the image of the whatever it is that you are stamping into it. Um, ductile, which means it can be drawn into a wire. What else did you tell me? Sonorous. Sonorous, which means it makes a sound when you hit it. Which is, I really don't like writing with this pen. We'll get used to it. Sonorous and conducts. What does it conduct? Electricity and anything else metals conduct? Heat. So they're malleable, ductile, sonorous, and they conduct heat and electricity. Oh, and they are normally solids solid at room temperature. The one exception is mercury. 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 Good. Which is a liquid at room temperature. But most of them are solids at room temperature. Oh, and they are shiny. And normally silver. Okay, so those are the properties that you hopefully have got a while ago. Nothing new popping out there, right? Just a reminder? Sonorous, I think, is new. Sonorous is new? Okay, so like a tuning fork, you hit it, it goes to? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's why most musical, not most musical instruments, quite a few music, musical instruments um, involve striking the metal. Okay, so those are the properties. This is what's going to explain it, its structure. So, structure for covalent compound was, well, the structural diagram, so sticks. Structure for ionic compound is the lattice structure. <coughs> so now for metallic structure, well, this is a little bit different. Interestingly, and, and perhaps unusually, if you have a copper wire, Actually, those you would think it was this, right? Copper, 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 and rows and columns of copper. Everybody okay with that? That's what you would think. And it's almost like that. Only this doesn't explain why it conducts electricity. <coughs> These rows and columns of copper. <coughs> and so, in order to conduct electricity, it must have free electrons. And so, right, let's add some free electrons then. Well, here's some electrons. And here's some electrons. And I need another couple layers of electrons in order to make it all balance. Where are those electrons coming from, do you think? If I had to draw a sodium metal, I would have drawn rows of Na and only one electron for every Na. If I drew They're calcium, there'd be two electrons. Like yeah, not the bonding electrons. They're well, they sort of are, yeah, I guess they are. But they're valence electrons. So if, this, if these electrons were the copper's valence electrons, then what does that make that copper become? Copper 2 plus. And this is a copper two plus, and this is a copper two plus, and this is so they're all actually <coughs> what we would say is cations. Do you know the term cation? Yeah. Okay. So they are all cations, <coughs> and their valence electrons are so far away from them that they actually kind of hover in between. And what makes the metal so strong is the attraction that this copper has to those electrons, but at the same time this copper has to those electrons. And it's a really strong attraction. And so what it does is it keeps the layers of the red 
cations held together really tightly. So that what's, that's what makes, oh, and I should have put that as a property, what makes metallic property, the metallic solids and strong. Because if they're held together tightly, it's a solid, right? Rows and columns of circles held tightly together, solid. <coughs> they conduct electricity because all of a sudden these electrons are free to flow. So if I hook up a battery and I make this charged part of the battery and I ask the battery to leave there, a negative, well, all these electrons are going to be attracted to that positive and they're going to flow that way. And I'm pushing the electricity through, through, through. And I replace these electrons with the electrons from the battery. Does that make sense? So that's why it connects electricity. Why does it why is it ductile and malleable? Can you think oops, I didn't mean to do that. Can you think why it would be um, ductile and malleable. Can you imagine stamping these rows and columns with something? And have you ever seen those, those, I don't even know what they're called, and they're not very popular anymore, but they're like rows of thin needles. <coughs> they don't have a point on them, but anyway, rows and rows and rows of metal sticks, and you smuck your face up to it, and then your face is indented on this side. Because all of these, what happens to these? They shift, right? So if I were to take this, is that, does everybody know this, this little game thing? Yeah, I don't they know. used to have one like science center. Science center. Yeah. They used to have one in the science center? And you, if I were to push in my finger here, these rows here would then push out like that. Right? This is why it's malleable. Look at my nice rows right here. If I were to push my finger just here on this row, this row would then slide all the way across. Leaving the image of the queen's nose, if that was a, if that was a nose there. On the other side of the coin. So these layers of cations can slide over each other. And that's what makes it malleable. And I'll just put an M this time. And ducta. Because actually if I put the top layer, layer and I slide it and I drop it, it becomes a wire. Okay. And well, and I'm going to, I know you're still writing that down, so I'm stalling, but I'm also going to Google a metallic structure so that you can see it in three-dimensional. Okay, so this is probably, no, that's not it. Don't look at that one, that's wrong. Uh, these are all ionic compounds still for some reason. Interesting. Okay, well, anyway, so here you go. Here's one where you've got the rows of the metal, M for metal, they're positively charged, an electron that's free to flow in between. I was hoping for a three-dimensional picture, but I haven't got one. So there are the electrons moving. Gosh, none of these are very good. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll have to find a better one for you and then look it up. But um, okay, rows of cations sliding over each other for ductile and malleable, and the free electrons for conductive electricity. Any questions? And that's your entire bonding unit. Done. Done. Okay? There's quite a bit in there, especially because of the Lewis structures and etc. But that's it. So for the remainder of the class, what we're going to do is we are going to do the end of bonding unit test 
the practice, not as a test, but as a worksheet that's in your snap booklet. So if you could dig that out. Dig out your snap booklets and I'll find out which page it's on.